Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Michael Lofton Show. I am really excited to tell you about a new program that I have the honor of going over um, and teaching. This is, to my knowledge, the first in the world, the first of its kind, a magisterial studies program that I will be teaching with the Catholic Polytechnic University. I spoke briefly about this a few days ago, and I have more information or updates and um, a link for you to sign up. In fact, I already put the link there in the show notes if you want to go straight to Catholic Polytechnic University's website and sign up. Again, this is a certificate program, so it's not just one course. It's going to be multiple courses, three in fact. And we do intend at some point in the future to initiate either bachelor's and or master's uh, programs in theology uh, that will go into magisterial studies in, for, in, in more detail. But we are going to start out with the certificate program. So it is a magisterial studies certificate program with three courses that one will complete in order to attain the certificate. Uh, certificate. Let me show you um, my screen so that you can uh, get an idea um, for the this course and also for um, the first lesson. Well, I should say course. Uh, there will actually be 10 lessons for that course. Um, so just kind of a quick overall, and by the way, this is at the catholicpolytechnic.org website. Again, I put a link to this already there in the show notes for you to go. Or if you're just on the website, uh, Catholic Polytechnic University, you just click on the certificate program and it will take you right here to the landing page where you have a registration form and also where you can make your payment. It's $350 um, per course. And again, there are three courses. Well, what are these courses? Well, as you can see, the first one is going to be introduction to the magisterium naturally. Right. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, however, the second course after that next semester is going to be councils, dogmas, canons and decrees, which is going to be an overview of the magisterium in church history. Um, so we're going to cover a lot of ground. We're going to be covering 2000 years of material the best that we can in one course. <laughs> Obviously, this is going to have to be, to an extent, um, summary information, because in 2,000 years, there's a lot when it comes to Catholic teaching authority. But we will look at the ecumenical councils, um, important uh, decrees and um, papal magisterial documents, um, canons that have come from various ecumenical councils. We will go over those. So that's going to be more of an historical course. Um, and then the third course is going to be um, evaluating magisterial teachings. And this is going to be where you practically take what we've learned about the magisterium in both the first course and second course takes what we've practically learned and we look at magisterial documents and we evaluate them. We wait, first of all, we determine if they are magisterial and how do we know that they're magisterial? Um, and then we determine how authoritative the document is. And so that's going to be an entire course because there's um, a fair amount of uh, things involved when it comes to accurately weighing magisterial documents. So um, that will be the third course. And upon completion of all three of those courses, one will have attained the magisterial uh, studies certificate degree, or I should say just certificate. Uh, again, we will have in the future, Lord willing, an actual bachelor's and or master's degree.
Uh, so more to come on that, but we need to start with a certificate program. Okay, so you can see my screen here. Again, this is the landing page at the catholicpolytechnic.org website for Catholic Polytechnic University. Um, this university established in uh, 2016 in Los Angeles, California, um, offers all sorts of uh, degrees, especially focusing on computer science, engineering, business. But of course, there's also a humanities department um, where theology um, is, of course, uh, a subject. And so this is a new program. And within the theology department, um, there is this certificate program. So again, if you just click on certificate over here at the top, you'll, you'll see the landing page where you can register and pay. And this gives you an idea of the first course introduction to the magisterium, which I will be teaching um, as a new adjunct professor. Um, at CPU. Okay, so it just gives some basic information how to contact me about matters related to the course. A course description. So the introduction to the magisterium course allows students to establish a foundational understanding of how teaching authority works within the Catholic Church. There's also some noteworthy course objectives. This course introduces students to the teaching authority of the Catholic Church. That's what magisterium refers to. It will evaluate, number one, the biblical roots of the magisterium. Incredibly important. Um, and in fact, I think that um, a lot of people may not be aware of both the Old and New Testament roots of the magisterium, but there's a lot there. So uh, we're going to explore that. We're going to talk about the organs of the magisterium, the subject, if you will, of the magisterium, who teaches, Pope, College of Bishops, and so on. The objects of the magisterium, what are taught and is taught, I should say. Um, so what is an object uh, that uh, could be taught by the magisterium? You know, can the magisterium teach, for instance, on matters of science? Or is it just matters of faith and morals? We'll, we'll have that conversation. The acts of the magisterium. So how does the magisterium teach? Definitively, non-definitively? How to maybe determine uh, which one it has employed? The levels of magisterial teachings, because after all, not all uh, doctrines and not all teachings are created equal. There are uh, degrees here. There are grades to teaching authority and grades to doctrine, as there are grades to um, air. And so we will discuss that, especially based on the profession of faith of John Paul II, 1998, and how to evaluate magisterial propositions. We're going to be talking about that in the introduction to the magisterium course, some basic principles. But again, as I noted, there will be that third course that goes into this in much more detail. Um, and so among other material. So upon completion of this particular course, you'll be able to uh, determine how the Catholic Magisterium was established, who may teach in the Catholic Church, the scope of Catholic teaching authority, different ways that the Magisterium teaches, the various levels of Catholic doctrine and the ability to evaluate the weight of a magisterial proposition. Um, so here's a brief outline of the 10 lessons for this particular course. Again, there will be three courses. We're going to start out with the Old Testament roots of the magisterium. And shockingly, um, pretty much every resource I've ever read and consulted on the magisterium starts with the New Testament. And that's unfortunate um, because we as Christians need to be aware of our Old Testament roots. And so if we are going to speak of the teaching authority in the New Covenant, um, it is incredibly important for us to understand the Old Covenant background to that um, because it will help us make sense of teaching authority in the New Covenant better because, again, the new covenant fulfills the old. It builds on the old. It's as, it's, it's as if we were to talk about the supernatural without talking about the natural, right? 
Well, grace builds on nature. You can't just talk about grace. You also have to talk about nature that it builds on, right? So we're going to talk about the Old Testament roots of the magisterium. So you're going to get some material there that you likely, um, unfortunately, um, will not find in most places because there really hasn't been a treatment of this, to my knowledge. Um, the New Testament roots of the magisterium, of course. Now, again, the magisterium considered as a subject who is teaching, considered as an object, what can be taught? The magisterium considered as act, how does it teach? Then we're going to talk about dogmas, the first uh, level teachings, first level corresponding to the first paragraph after the Nicene Creed in the current profession of faith. Then second level teachings, what's called definitive Catholic doctrine. So not dogmas per se, but they are definitive in nature. And then third level teachings, which are authentic Catholic teachings or authentic Catholic doctrine. So these are going to be your non-definitive teachings. They're neither dogmas nor definitive Catholic doctrine. It's its own category, non-definitive teachings. Um, and unfortunately, there's not enough um, awareness of this particular category. Uh, so I'm going to be calling um, significant attention to it in the course. Then again, evaluating magisterial propositions, some basic principles. And then finally, my favorite subject when I'm when I'm um, writing my doctoral dissertation on, and that is magisterial reversals. Um, likely a term one hasn't encountered before because it's it's not something that has been explored in any significant detail, which is exactly why I'm doing my dissertation on it, because there is a lacuna here. That's the whole purpose of a dissertation, to kind of explore something that hasn't really been addressed before, but there's a need for it. Um, so I will give you a sneak peek into my doctoral work in that lecture. So we will distinguish between different kinds of reversals. I'll give you some examples of them. And we will discuss to what extent there can be reversals. To what extent can we speak about reversals? And in what context would it be inappropriate to speak of reversals? You know, or what, what are things that cannot be reversed, right? Um, so we'll discuss that. Um, this, will, this will be on Mondays, 7.30 to 8.45 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So I think if you're Eastern, that's 8.30. And if you are Pacific, that should be 5.30, I believe. And then this will, again, start June 17th through August 19th for this, for this course, right, for these 10 lessons. Um, so we will have the semester after that, the second course, and I believe the one after that, the uh, the third course, and then the program will start over again. Um, now, I do have some recommended reading on here um, that you could purchase, of course, through Amazon. Not absolutely essential for you to take the course, but highly recommended. Highly recommended, especially the first one. Um, Avery Dulles's work on the Magisterium. This is kind of the classic if you will, work on the magisterium as far as an introduction to it. Also, I have, of course, Sullivan's work on the magisterium and then his part two, Creative Fidelity. Really, really important, um, especially when we come to evaluating magisterial propositions. I uh, do have Gail Lardy's work on here, By What Authority? And then Jimmy Aiken's uh, work teaching with authority um, I found also to be a really helpful um, introduction to the magisterium for multiple reasons and so again recommended reading not absolutely required so if there's an issue with you know um, time you don't have the time to read them or funds totally get it I'm not going to require any knowledge on your part uh, either from these books or about the magisterium at all. In fact, you can come into this program knowing nothing about Catholic theology, know, knowing nothing about Catholicism. Um, 
you don't even have to know what the word theology is. I mean, we're going to start from scratch, from the very, very basic. So you don't have to have any, um, um, in any uh, knowledge on this particular subject beforehand. We're going to start from scratch um, and go from there. And again, you don't even have to be a Catholic to participate in the program. All uh, people are welcome to learn more about Catholic teaching authority. So again, this was course one, which is the first one that we're starting with, and that's why it's described here. Again, you have a sign-up page right here that you can click on if you want to sign up. It is active, so you should be able to sign up at any time. So that is a live link. And again, it's $350. And that's going to be per course. So next semester, it'll be um, an additional fee and the one after that as well. By the way, I do want to throw in the mix of that. Um, it's pretty cool because this is a magisterial study certificate program, which I will be um, teaching. But there's also um, two other certificate programs that are going to be created. One is going to be an apologetics um, certificate, and another is going to be a biblical studies certificate program. So now I won't be teaching those courses, but I want to make you aware of those in case you're interested in them. I highly recommend them. Um, and we'll talk more about them in the future. Perhaps I'll have the gentlemen on who are going to teach it, um, and they can come on and talk a little bit more about it. So I don't want to you know, steal their thunder or anything, but I do want to make you aware, uh, sneak peek, that is coming up. So be aware there's some other certificate programs. So if this one doesn't work out well for you, um, if you, you know, think that um, apologetics or biblical studies would be a good fit for you, be aware that those are going to be available as well. Uh, but we're starting out with the Magisterial Studies Certificate Program. Again, the first of its kind. Um, again, to my knowledge, uh, there hasn't been um, there there hasn't been a program like this. And um, again, it's my hope that this will turn into an actual um, bachelor's and or master's, so a graduate program. We'll see what the Lord has in store for us and how things unfold, but we need to start with a certificate program. I I really hope that this is of interest to you. If it is um, and you have questions about it, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. Let me pull up the screen again and show you the contact information where you could reach me with questions specifically about the course. So it's going to be different than questions related to you know, reason and theology. If you have questions specifically about the course, um, whether you have signed up or not, feel free to reach out to me, cpu.lofton at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out to me there. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have to the best of my abilities. And so if I don't know the answer, I'll certainly um, put you in touch with the right people who do. Uh, Borowski says, just found your channel first time watching. Awesome. Well, glad to have you and uh, hope you've been, enjoyed the stream and enjoy the uh, content in the future. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. And if y'all have any questions, put them in the chat. I'm happy to answer um, and field any questions that you may have at this moment. Just make sure to tag me at Reason and Theology. I'll stick around here for just a moment to answer anything that y'all may have. Uh, Jacob says, Michael Swag Lofton. That's funny. Uh, Larry says, hey, Michael. Hey, good to see you, Larry. Um, Shell says, Ohio. <laughs> what is that from? I've seen that before. You got to fill me in. Ohio. <laughs> I've heard that before. Uh, great work, Michael Gene says. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, not sure what's going on with some of the other comments. Almost looks like spanning. Um Okay. Julia says, have a great day. God bless you too. Uh, let's see. Um, you're getting cooked in the comments. I don't know what that is referring to, but sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Des asks, will it be a course to do at your own time or will it be only online mode? Great question. So 
Um, <clears throat> it will be on Mondays where we will meet on Zoom, um, where we will have a time where I go over the lesson. And then there will be a period of time where you can ask questions. Uh, so it will be interactive and live. However, it will be recorded and then also posted. So if somebody is unable to attend um, the sessions live, they can still benefit from the material after the fact. And certainly one can do it at their own pace um, as a result. And so, yeah, I mean, don't, don't feel pressured to... Um, make it work with that time. You know, if that time doesn't work, that that's fine. Um, oh, good to see you, Father Brown. He says, just getting here. Yeah, really good to see you. Oh, let's see. David says, hello, first time here. Well, good to see you. I, uh, I hope you're enjoying. Hello from uh, Toronto. Catholic Deacon says, hey, good to see you. Um, let's see. Tracy says, very exciting. Michael would like to participate, but I'm paying in Canadian dollars. We used to be poor. <laughs> I get it. Um, are there books to purchase? Well, no, not as a requirement. I'm not going to require it. H however, I do highly recommend um, you get these five books here. Or at the very least, the very first one and Jimmy Akin's. So Avery Dulles Magisterium and Jimmy Akin Teaching with Authority. So if you only get you know, one, get, get Dulles. If you can only get two, Dulles and Akin. But it's really helpful if you get all five, especially Sullivan's works. These are these are your classics. Um, so, but you know, I'm I'm not going to require anybody to have read one of the things I don't like, and you know, numerous courses I've taken is um, professors who um, basically assume that you've already read the assigned material, um, and then deliver their lectures with that assumption i don't like that <laughs> i don't like that at all uh just deliver the lecture as if i haven't read anything and then let me go and read the assigned readings uh but that's just my personal take so no i'm not going to require it plus i don't think it would be fair there might not be people who can um at this time either spend the time to read through them or for them so in fairness to everyone no, it's not required, but it is recommended. So um, let's see. Is there any possibility that Adam and Jesus are one? No. Uh, but let's try to stick to the questions related specifically to uh, the program. I'd be happy to do a different Q&A session on questions unrelated. I, I see another one. Can you explain why Syrians and Coptics say the Catholic Church is an historian? Uh, they reference the Third Ecumenical Council and do it. So I've gone into this in great detail, especially in the videos where I've gone over the acts of the Council of um, Ephesus and also Chalcedon. Of course, Constantinople, Constantinople too is also going to be related. The reason why is if you look at the Tome of Leo, they misread it and they see a reference to two natures and interpret that as two persons. It's a misreading of the Tome of Leo. Leo wasn't a historian at all. Um, there's no way to actually, in, in context, take him as a historian. He completely rejects historianism. And so it's just completely misunderstanding what is being discussed. Just because we're referencing something that is two doesn't mean that it is two persons, um, i.e. Nestorianism. Ergo, uh, it is completely a misunderstanding. And so, no, there, there's absolutely no way to continue this silly slander that Catholics are Nestorian. And, and by the way, not just Catholics, but that slander would then also apply to um other Chalcedonians, such as Eastern Orthodox, and it's, it's silly. All right, well, look, we, we can talk about that in more detail another time. Uh, let's try to um, limit ourselves to questions about the subject matter today. Ohio means hello in Japanese. I knew that. Can't believe I couldn't recall that at the moment. I knew that. I've heard people say that before, and yeah. That was the context. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, Michael says, bless you, and may you bring many lost souls to Christ Jesus. I'm a disciple of the Most High. I don't convert, but I support those who teach about Christ Jesus. Well, God bless you, too, and I hope you, you find the channel helpful. Um, let's see here. 
still looking through the chat. Um, it's off topic. Any updates on Mari Emanuel? I haven't seen any beyond what I've discussed earlier this morning, so not not to my knowledge. Um, okay, anything else related specifically to the course that I could help clear up any other questions? Questions, comments, cares, and concerns, as they say, right? Uh, <laughs> let's see. <clears throat> let's see some nonsensical comments. Okay. Um, Kiffa says, my bad, I was getting slammed about it on Facebook earlier. I get it. That, that's fine. Yeah, let, let's just try to stick, however, to specifically, uh, you know, comments or questions about the Magisterial Studies program. Uh, let's see. This class should be required. <laughs> I feel like that, right? I, I think that all, all Catholics should um, have a class on the Magisterium in their... Uh, OCIA classes, right? <laughs> it's it's a huge lacuna. It's something missing in a lot of our catechesis. So. Uh, let's see. Hmm, okay. Well, I think I grabbed everything that was relevant to um, the course and the program. Anyways, well... I will wrap it up here. I really appreciate y'all watching. If you are interested, again, let me show you the link. The link, by the way, is in the show notes. But um, if you simply go to catholicpolytechnic.org, and if you're on the homepage, just click on the certificate program right up here, and you'll see it. Introduction to the Magisterium. This is course one of three for a magisterial studies certificate program. Uh, you have your registration form here. It's pretty simple. And then you will, will um, make your payment either with PayPal, Venmo, pay later, debit or credit card. Um, there are or there is a payment program available through the university as well. Uh, so that is an option. So keep that in mind too. All right. So definitely go and check it out. Like I said, the link is there in the show notes. What are some good things we can look forward about the course? Well, a couple of things come to mind. Again, Old Testament roots of the magisterium is going to be something rarely discussed. I mean, frankly, the magisterium is rarely discussed, but especially if you read through books about the magisterium, I haven't really seen any treat in any kind of serious way the Old Testament roots of the magisterium. So that's going to be an important one. Um in addition to the ninth lesson, evaluating magisterial propositions, that's very, very uh, important and also practical in giving you some tools to go ahead and apply for magisterial documents when they come out. Or, of course, you know, um, magisterial documents that have already been released, um, weighing them evaluating, just determining um, how authoritative something is. I mean, determining even if it is magisterial, that's part of evaluating, right? Um, and so weighing them, determine, determining how authoritative that it, this is, because of course, Lumen Gentium 25, among other places, speaks about, um, speaks about this whenever it notes how the Pope can teach. Um, and it speaks about the um, authoritativeness of the teaching based on the frequency of the teaching, um, the tone, um, among other indicators. So we're going to look at all the indicators that would determine the weight of a magisterial document and, and, and co consider those as they factor in. Um, and then, of course, another thing that would make it um, distinct and what you should look forward to is the one on magisterial reversals rarely discussed. And that's again, what I'm writing my dissertation on, um, can, can some teachings reverse and what do we mean by reversal? Um, and if we can distinguish between these, you know, different kinds of reversals, what are they? What are the different kinds? Um, one of the contributions that I'm offering to this discussion in the doctoral dissertation is there has never been um, a theologian who has 
identified the different kinds of reversals that are possible um, and then named them. So given them specific designations. Though that's one thing that I've done in the dissertation went among several contributions. And so I've identified the different kinds of reversals um, that there could be, and I've given them specific designations so that in the future we could um, be aware of some important distinctions here whenever we speak of reversals and then have uh, a language to speak about them. Uh, to identify different kinds because I think if you you know again it's not common to encounter discussions about reversals but in the rare cases where you will find it unfortunately they don't distinguish and I, I'm sad to say even with like Sullivan doesn't really distinguish between the different kinds of reversals you could argue it was implicit in his thought and what I want to do is take the distinctions that were implicit there and bring them out explicitly, identify them, and name them. Okay, so I'll talk about that in the 10th lecture. So those are some things to look forward to. So you'll, you'll get a sneak peek into uh, some of my doctoral work. Dave says, I'll look at this very interesting. Good deal. Yeah. Seeing the Old Testament connections between Israel and the Catholic Church was eye-opening for me in my journey. Yeah, it's important for us to understand our roots. The Old Testament roots are the most exciting part uh, to me. Would it happen to draw from the authority of the Old Testament priesthood? Yes, 100%. So I'm going to be speaking about, in fact, I'll show you PowerPoint uh, for the lecture. Pull it up. Still working on it, um, but it's an unfinished work, so don't judge it. But um, here's just one slide among many where you can see I'm addressing the question of authority in relation to the priesthood, one among many. Um, so that's certainly there. Of course, there's different kinds of authority that I've observed in the Old Testament. The authority of Adam and Eve, we could start with Adam, right? Um, the authority of the father in the family, the authority of judges, which could arguably be subsumed underneath uh, the authority of the prophet. Uh, so we, were, we will speak of prophets, we will speak of priests and their authority, and we will speak, of course, of kings and their authority. So priest, prophet, kings are kind of your three fundamental sources of authority in the Old Testament and how they relate to Jesus, how they're fulfilled in Jesus in the new covenant, and then how Jesus's authority um, then unfolds in the new covenant era through the apostles and then through apostolic succession with the bishops. And so we're going to be able to see how there's some interesting points in the new covenant with that we that we have currently in, in, in the new covenant with teaching authority that really draws from some Old Testament aspects. There's Old Testament precedent. For instance, the laying on of hands, you know, and the... Um, in the discussion about apostolic succession, you have the laying on of hands. Well, that's not new to the New Covenant. Um, that goes back at least to Moses and his authority. You can see that with Joshua. He passes his authority on to Joshua explicitly in the book of Deuteronomy, if I recall correctly, through the laying on of hands. And then that continues all the way to the great uh, Sanhedrin. And so... We'll, we'll discuss that in more detail. There's obviously some points of discontinuity um, and some points of continuity. And the reason why there's points of discontinuity between the new and the old uh, specifically is because Jesus taught with an authority unlike that of the, the um, those who sat in the seat of Moses or even Moses himself. Because Jesus is greater than Moses. He's the new lawgiver. And so his authority is going to be different than Moses' authority, but 
it's kind of like grace builds on nature. Jesus's authority, it does build on the authority established in the Old Testament. So I'm going to talk about that at length in the first lesson. And of course, at the end of each lesson, there will be an opportunity for people to ask questions live and it will be recorded for those who are unable to attend but have um, signed up for the course. So hopefully that helps uh, get you excited about, especially uh, the first lecture. Um, Kenneth says, sounds like an awesome course and totally needed today. Very much. There's a lot of application, especially in the, th I mean, the whole thing has application for today. You'll especially see it um, in the third course. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're going to see it all over the first one and the second one, but especially in, in evaluating magisterial documents. Mm. It's unfortunate that there hasn't been anything that really just kind of sits people down and shows them in one place, here's how to do it. Just hasn't been done. Hence the need for this program. So um, I hope that you will consider supporting it and signing up for it. And I look forward to um, having discussions with you and going over these lessons with you if you are able to sign up. So uh, check it out, catholicpolytechnic.org. Just click on the certificate um, tab at the top or go to the link that I have right here in the show notes. All right, so stay tuned for more, and I'll uh, let you know as the um, situation with this uh, Magisterial Studies certi Certificate Program unfolds. So I uh, wanted to, however, introduce this to you and uh, make you aware of the opportunity. Like I said, the link is live, so you can go and register and sign up now with June 17th being the date of the first lesson. All right, see you later. God bless. Hey friends, do you want others to discover why the Catholic Church is the church that Jesus established? And do you want to help people make sense of all the confusion in the Catholic Church today? Help contribute to this mission by supporting Reason and Theology at patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. By doing so, you'll also get access to exclusive content for patrons only. Also, if you want to deepen your faith, there are free ebooks and even courses that you can sign up for by visiting reason.podia.com. Are you a Catholic thinking about converting to Eastern Orthodoxy? Or are you a Protestant discerning whether or not to become Catholic or Eastern Orthodox? If so, I have the book just for you. It's called Answering Orthodoxy and engages all of the arguments that Eastern Orthodox use against the Catholic Church. I respond to all of them. I show that they are in error and in fact they're inconsistent because the things that Orthodox are objecting to are in fact found in their own tradition. So the fullness of the faith can only be found in the Catholic Church. Check out the book right now at shop.catholic.com for your copy today.